In this video, I will explain how the ohms of an inductor increases as frequency goes up based on the concept of inductive reactance. I will also demonstrate inductive reactance in action using a signal generator, this inductor, and this light bulb here. Finally, I will show how inductive reactance causes a phase shift between voltage and current and will explain in great detail why this happens. Inductors tend to oppose current flow at high frequencies. In fact, at the highest frequency, the ohms of the inductor approaches infinity. As you decrease the frequency, however, the ohms correspondingly decreases. In fact, as you continue decreasing frequency, the opposition to current flow approaches zero ohms. This ohms, if you will, is known as inductive reactance. It is the manner in which the inductor reacts to changing current through it. What causes the ohms of an inductor to increase as the frequency of the signal generator is increased? Inductors, by their nature, resist changes in current because their magnetic field stores energy that results in a form of electrical inertia. The faster you try to change the current through an inductor, the more it will push back. On the other end of the spectrum, decrease in the frequency causes the ohms of the inductor to go down. As the current through the circuit from the signal generator approaches a frequency of zero hertz, also known as DC, the ohms or the inductive reactance of the inductor approaches zero. Hence, as the DC voltage is applied to the circuit, the inductive reactance is at its lowest, presenting zero ohms within the circuit and a maximum current will flow. The inductor basically looks like a wire. This YouTube channel is about applied theory, so I'm not going to dig too deep into the formula of how this works, but as you can see, Frequency is the numerator of this formula, which is used to calculate inductive reactance. The result is this linear response here that illustrates that as you increase frequency, the ohms or inductive reactance of the inductor increases. This, of course, for Ohm's law, results in less current flow through the circuit. Here we have a small incandescent light bulb in series with a 5.5 millihenry inductor. Of course, we have this signal generator here as our voltage source. As they start with a near DC voltage or close to zero hertz, you can see the light bulb is fully lit. This inductor right now is exhibiting the minimum inductive reactance of near zero ohms, less the resistance of its coil of wire, of course. If, however, I start to increase the frequency, the inductor's ohms increases and causes less current flow to flow through the circuit. Until, as you can see, the light bulb eventually goes out implying that the inductive reactance or ohms of this inductor is approaching infinity. This is how inductive reactance works. Essentially, at very low frequencies, inductors look just like a wire, and at very high frequencies, more like an open circuit. As opposed to what happens with capacitive reactance, the voltage actually leads the current with inductive reactance. Why does this happen, though? As mentioned, inductors oppose changes in current. When voltage is first applied, the inductor temporarily opposes the rise in current by generating a counter EMF. So even though the voltage is rising, the current lags behind as the magnetic field builds. To demonstrate this, I've set the signal generator to 1 kilohertz. At that frequency, the inductive reactance of the coil is 35 ohms, which happens to match the resistance of this light bulb. We could have used a different frequency, but went with one kilohertz to keep the numbers nice and clean. This should, however, create about a 45 degree phase difference between the voltage and current for our demonstration. If we look at the oscilloscope, you'll see two traces here. The yellow trace is the supply voltage to the circuit, and the purple trace is the current through the circuit. This current is calculated using the voltage across the bulb in Ohm's law. Notice how the two traces are offset. The yellow trace, the voltage, leads the purple trace, the current. That's because when the voltage is first applied to an inductor, it pushes current through the coil, but not immediately. The current pushes back by generating a reverse voltage called counter EMF or back EMF. This opposing voltage reduces the net voltage across the inductor, making it harder for the current to start flowing. As a result, current doesn't jump up like it would through a resistor. Instead, it ramps up gradually since the inductor is busy building a magnetic field and that takes energy. Even when the supply voltage begins to drop, current can keep rising for a bit. That's because the opposing voltage from the inductor is fading faster than the supply voltage is falling. So for a short time, there's still enough internal push to keep the current increasing, even though the supply voltage is decreasing. This repeating pattern creates a periodic steady state phase shift between the voltage and the current. In this case, the shift is about 40 degrees, 
Without the resistive light bulb, it would be a full 90 degrees. But because the bulb adds a resistive load that sheds energy as heat instead of sending it back like the inductor, the phase shift is reduced to something of less than 90 degrees. I hope that all made sense, and if this type of practical electrical theory helps you out, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more future videos.